Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Ken said you all sound like a pep rally this morning. It's a pep rally for Jesus. We're going to get some pom-poms. Uh, good morning. It's great to see you all in worship here at Bon Air Christian Church. Uh, if we haven't had the chance to meet, my name is David Finnegan Hosey, and I'm the minister here. Uh, and we're so glad you're here. It's good to be in worship together this morning. There is, as always, a lot going on in the life of the church, and so you can take a look at the back of your bulletin for all of our weekly opportunities for prayer and fellowship and service. Uh, there are a couple of things in particular to lift up today, starting with this is Vacation Bible School Week. We have 53 kids signed up, so pray for us. Uh, and we're decorating for VBS after church today. Anything, any details about that, Kendra? Cool. Meet in the fellowship hall. If you got some hands free after the service today, we're going to get the church set up for VBS. Also this week, we got uh, the choir singing at the Flying Squirrels game. So Kim, you wanted to share a little bit about that? Awesome. Thanks, Kim. 55. That's awesome. Great. Yeah. We'll have a good crowd. Uh, in your bulletin, there is an insert with information about a couple of things, one of which is the uh, September 7th Help Build Hope build. Do you want to talk about that at all, Kathy? Or September 7th. Awesome. Yeah, lots of information there on that flyer. No prior construction experience needed. There's a link and there's a QR code there that you can use to register. So hope you'll uh, consider coming together and helping us uh, build, a, build a frame for a house for a, a neighbor who uh, uh, is in need of, of safe and affordable housing right now. Then on the back of that insert is some information about our summer book study which will start not this coming week, but the week after, the week after Vacation Bible School. Uh, as has become our usual custom, we'll have two opportunities to participate, one uh, at night on Wednesday on the uh, same link as Zoom Prayer and Fellowship. We'll start right after Prayer and Fellowship ends. Uh, the other one will be in person Thursday at 1030, and we'll meet in the office. The book is a handbook for today's disciples, fifth edition, Brenda Kidd brought me her first edition, uh, just to compare. <laughs> um, it's a great intro if you're new to the church or you're new to the Disciples of Christ to learn a bit more about that. But <clears throat> even if you are uh, an old pro around here, I hope you'll participate anyway, because we're also going to be using that book as a launching off point to talk about some questions of like who we are as a church today. What do we mean when we say we have a mission? What do we mean when we talk about wholeness ministry? So we're going to talk about some of those things uh, using this book as a launching off point. Books are in the office. Feel free to grab one. Uh, free will donation if you'd like. Okay? So starts the 14th and the 15th, Wednesday evening on Zoom, or Thursday 1030 in person in the office. Here's the book. I'm holding it. It's been awaiting. Any other announcements? Yeah, Brenda. Awesome. Thanks, Brenda. Yeah, so we need some food in the, the Bainbridge bin out there by the, the church office. Yeah, Vicki. Choir is going to start up on Tuesday, August 20th, I believe is the date. Um, so if you're interested in singing and making a joyful noise with us, come on. Um, we have a lot of fun, and uh, it's probably the best thing you've ever you know. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thanks, Vicki. Choir's awesome. We won't even just, like, throw you out uh, in front of, like, the entire Flying Squirrels arena. You can, you can come to a couple of rehearsals first. So. Any other announcements? We um, didn't get to do Christmas in July this year, uh, but uh, we are going to start after the prelude singing Joy to the World. And so, joy to the world, the Lord is come. Come, let us worship the Lord.
please read with me the words of assurance adapted from Psalm 100. Shout joy to the Lord, all earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Enter God's presence with joy. Know that the Lord is God, our maker to whom we belong. God is our shepherd and we belong. Indeed, the Lord is good. God's love is forever, faithful from age to age. Let us pray the prayer given to us by our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. You may now be seated. In gratitude to God, let us now receive our tithes and offerings. Let's pray. Holy One, we give you thanks for all of the many gifts you pour out on us so abundantly each and every day. We'd ask that you bless these, our offerings, these first fruits of our commitment to your mission of healing and wholeness in the world. Send these and send us out into your world in love and service to all. In the name of Christ our Lord. Amen.
your promise it still stands it's chasing after me the rainbow through storm clouds is how i'm gonna see that there is a light that's waiting up ahead so i'll stay in the fight and look to the one who said hold on just a little bit longer i know it's gonna be okay these days are gonna make you stronger you'll find purpose in the pain hold on just a little bit longer deep down there's a well of faith let hope arise as you're lifting up my name and just hold on hold on hold on just wait till you see what's at the end of the road a new is ready to unfold hold on just a little bit longer i know it's gonna be okay these days are gonna make you stronger you'll find purpose in the pain hold on just a little bit longer deep down there's a well of faith let hope arise as you lift and just hold on, hold on, hold on, just hold on, just hold on. Thank you, Nicole. <clears throat> We're about to strike a very different musical note, just so you know. <laughs> Can I have the children come up with a children's message? <laughs> oh, thank you, kiddo. You know how sometimes you leave your kazoo at home, you know, so you have to get a kazoo delivery? You know how that is. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hey, y'all. Hello. How's it going? Good. Good. Good to see everybody. Buddy, how y'all doing? You good? <laughs> Did I scare you off, Bodie? That can't be right. <laughs> All right. Um, hey, I'm going to show you something, okay? What do I have here, do you think? That's my Bible. You can see it's kind of worn out, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. If you take a Bible like this and you flip it open right in the middle, we end up in a book called Psalms. Psalms. And Psalms are poems and songs and um, uh, prayers to God, and there's 150 of them, okay? The, the word for this book, we call it Psalms, but the original word means praises. Can you say praise? Praise. praise. Okay. We're going to read a psalm together today. We're going to read the last psalm, Psalm 150. And every time I say praise, I want you to say praise. Can you try that? Praise. That's pretty good. Let's get a little help from out here. Praise. Praise. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, all right. So that's the first, first set of instructions, okay? But here's the cool thing about Psalm 150. It is filled with instruments. The whole song has a bunch of musical instruments. So I'm also going to need to pass out some musical instruments. Okay, so here's the deal. Uh, we're going to start with trumpet sound. So I need one kazoo player. Who wants to play a kazoo? Okay, that's your trumpet, Angel. Okay? All right. All right. Then we've got lute and harp. Those are stringed instruments, so I got a ukulele here. You want to try the ukulele? All right. I'm just going to strum that. Okay. Here, give us a kazoo. Let's hear how the kazoo sounds. Give it a... Other side. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Give it a blow. Go. 
hum. Like, <laughs> you got to hum. Go. <laughs> okay, good. All right, now give us a strum on the, the lute and the harp there. Great. Okay, good job. All right, then we've got tambourine and dance. Who wants a tambourine? Anyone want a tambourine? Okay, good job. All right, and then we need strings and pipe. I don't have anything good for strings and pipe. Vicki, can you help us out? We've got strings and pipe. Strings and pipe. All right. Yes. All right. Uh, and then loud clashing cymbals. I couldn't find a cymbal, so I've got a bell. Who wants a bell? You got a bell? You got the bell. Okay. And then, uh, oh, we've got some more uh, cymbals. So, oh, I forgot drums. We got, we got some drums. Cody, you want a drum? You get a drum. And you're going to have cymbal, too. Can you do cymbals, too? Okay. All right. Everybody got? Everybody try their instrument out. Yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> um, okay, so first rule, when I say praise, you say praise, praise right? Praise. praise. Okay, the second is when I tell, say your instrument, you're going to play the instrument, but we're going to add to the instrument, all right? So each instrument, the previous one's going to play too. I'll point to you, okay? And then here's the last thing. When I say breathe, everybody stop playing. Take a big, big, deep breath, okay? All right, that's going to be the hardest part, I guarantee you. All right, are you ready? Yeah. All right, I'll point to you for your part. Okay, praise. Praise. Praise the Lord. Praise. Praise. God in his sanctuary. Praise. Praise. God in his mighty firmament. Praise. Praise. God for his mighty deeds. Praise. Praise. God according to his surpassing greatness. Praise. Praise. God with trumpet sound. <laughs> praise, praise God with lute and harp lute and harp and trumpet sound good job okay praise, praise God with tambourine and dance and give us some lute and harp give us that at the same time and give us some trumpet sound good job okay all right praise, praise God with clanging cymbals give us some clanging cymbals there kiddo you know, ring, ring the bell ring the bell ring it hard there you go give us some tambourine Give us some lute and harp. Give us some trumpet sound. Good job. All right. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. And praise with drums and dance. Okay, all of you, all of you. Drums, drums, bell, bow, cymbals. Yep, yep, yep. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Amen. Hey, great job, everyone. Give us all, give us all and more again. Give us all the answers. Give us doing a look. Three, 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 three. Good job. All right. Good job, team. Hey, great work. What a what a bunch of musicians. I told you all slightly different musical notes. All right, good work. So now you've sung a psalm together. A praise to God. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, great. I think we're gonna send you to worship and wonder, and Miss Susan's gonna take you. Go team. <laughs> Our first scripture reading comes from 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verses 10 to 16. Then David blessed the Lord in the presence of all the assembly. David said, Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our ancestor Israel, forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, are the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in the heavens and on the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom. O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Riches and honor come from you, and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might, and it is in your hand to make great and to give strength to all. And now, our God, we give thanks to you and praise your glorious name. But who am I and what is my people that we should be able to make this free will offering? For all things come from you and of your own have we given back to you. For we are aliens and transients before you, 
as were all our ancestors. Our days on earth are like a shadow, and there is no hope. O oh Lord our God, all this abundance that we have provided for building you a house for your holy name comes from your hand and is all your own. come together in a time of prayer and there are uh, a lot of folks in our community who we are lifting up who are in need of God's healing and God's comfort this week. Um, we want to lift up uh, Mackenzie and her family as you all remember your cousin Dale this week we're keeping you in prayer and in our hearts. We also want to uh, lift up Deborah who's recovering after a fall. It's good to see you Deborah. Glad you're here and keep keeping you in prayer for a speedy recovery. Um, and then we want to keep Tracy Eagle uh, in our prayers as, as she continues with her, her treatment and uh, um, recovers from her hip injection. And she's also got a, a, a sick kitty. Uh, so do we have an update on the kitty? Okay. Okay, great. Hip and kitty both doing good. So that's good. Keep the prayers up then. All right. Um, who else are we praying for this week? Yeah, Cindy. Okay. Praying for Cindy's brother-in-law, William. Uh, did I get that right? William, yeah, William Reynolds, uh, who's being admitted to start his bone cancer treatment this week. Yeah, keeping him in prayer. Yeah, Mary Ann. Keeping Mary Ann's uh, brother Frank in our prayers as he's having a lot of health problems. Yeah. So a prayer of celebration for uh, uh, Angie's friend's son who uh, is in a halfway house and we're praying on the, on the road to recovery. So we want to keep them in prayer. Uh, keep Lee's colleague Stephanie in our prayers. Her mom Zoe passed away uh, this week. Praying for Andy and Tiffany, Kendra's friends, uh, who Andy's father passed away this week. So we want to keep them in prayer as they remember. Uh, I want to thank you for my prayers for my parents, Marion and Gary. Uh, if you could continue to pray for them, they they are in need of it. And uh, we've got 50-some kids coming to Vacation Bible School this week. So I'd like us to pray for all of them, for all our volunteers who are helping this week, for all the families of those kids who are going to be here, um, that, that everyone involved might experience God's love here at Bonner Christian Church this week. Let's be together with God in prayer. Compassionate and merciful God, you who are our spring of living water, who we turn to when we are in need. We come to you this morning acknowledging our limits, acknowledging our dependence on you. We need you each hour and each day. But we confess that sometimes we forget that. That sometimes we try to move forward on our own strength when all that we have and all that we are comes from you. We thank you, giver of all good gifts, and we turn over to you our prayers, our hearts, our whole selves, trusting, O oh God, in your good and gracious hands. For those who are in need of healing this morning, we ask that you be for them the great physician that you give to those entrusted with their care, insight and skill and compassion, so that your healing power might be felt through their human hands. For those who grieve or say goodbye, grant some measure of your comfort. Remind us of that great cloud of witnesses, the communion of saints, who tell us that nothing, not even death, can separate us from your love. For those in need of food or shelter or sanctuary today, be a refuge and a provider. And in those places in your world where because of violence or oppression, because of tragedy or disaster, your children are crying out for help, we pray for your kingdom to come, for the kingdoms of this world to know of your justice, of your mercy, and of your peace. And if, O oh God, in any of these places of need, 
It is our gifts or our presence that might be of help. Then call us quickly there, knowing as we go that even when we don't know what to do or what to say, or even how to pray, even then, your very spirit is crying out within us in sighs too deep for words, all in the name of the one who is our advocate, our companion, our comforter, and our friend, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our second scripture reading today comes from the book of Revelation, from the seventh chapter. Let's listen and hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory, wisdom and honor, thanksgiving and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one who knows this. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They've washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple, and the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, speak to us here today. Holy Spirit, speak through us here today. Holy Spirit, speak in spite of us here today. Amen. Today I want to talk about praise. And in order to do that, I'm going to bring us back just for a moment to the Lord's Prayer. Now, I know that we spent six whole weeks on the Lord's Prayer this summer, but we pray at 52 weeks out of the year, so a couple more moments won't hurt us, right? Um, Astute observers who have been following along with the sermon series, and if you missed it, that's okay. We keep them all on YouTube, right? So lucky you, right? (laughs) But if you've been following along, you might have noticed that the series stopped short of the ending of the prayer as we pray it every week. I didn't preach a sermon on the line, Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A couple of you noticed that and asked me about it. And there is a long and technical and complex explanation for why that verse is omitted. But God has shown great mercy to me in my life, and I want to pass that mercy on to you. So I am not going to tell you the long and complex and technical explanation, though if you want to talk about it, do ask me about it. (laughs) But here is the short version. As far as we can tell, thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever is not an original part of the prayer that Jesus teaches in Matthew 6, the oldest, most reliable manuscripts of Matthew's gospel that we have do not include it. If you open up your pew Bible and look in Matthew 6, you'll see it's there only in a footnote, not in the main text. But, and I think this part is pretty cool, we also know that this ending to the prayer has been prayed by followers of Jesus after the Lord's Prayer since before the New Testament writings were even completed. The same early source that lets us know that early Christians prayed this prayer not once a week, not three times a week, but three times a day, that same source 
which is as old as the Gospel of Matthew itself, also tells us that this prayer was prayed by the early church, ending with, for thine is the power and the glory forever. So for centuries and centuries and centuries, as long as there have been churches praying the Lord's Prayer, there have been churches using this conclusion to that prayer, which I think just shows a lot of wisdom. The prayer Jesus teaches us gives us permission to ask God for things. We ask God to be God, to fulfill God's promises, to meet our everyday human needs, to lead us and rescue us. And I think the early church had some wisdom in saying, you know, if we're going to be asking God for things three times a day, maybe we should also include a little bit of praise. Some praise. When we pray the Lord's Prayer, we end it with words of praise. In fact, this conclusion to the prayer is technically called the doxology of the Lord's Prayer. Now, you might be thinking the doxology. I know a doxology, and it goes, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Right? It doesn't sound like the end of the Lord's Prayer at all. But doxology just means words of praise. There can be a lot of different kinds of doxology. A lot of different words of praise. So this ending to the prayer is a doxology. It's words of praise that we offer after all the ways Jesus teaches us to ask God for help. The idea that the early church would add words of praise to the prayer Jesus teaches, it makes perfect sense against the background of prayers in the Jewish tradition. There would be a structure of common prayer that was the same everywhere. And then there would be places where different communities or different teachers would have the freedom to offer up their own version of prayer. When the disciples come to Jesus and they say, Jesus, teach us to pray, it's not because they've never heard a prayer before, right? It's because they're asking Jesus to teach his prayer, his particular form of prayer within the tradition that they already knew so well. That tradition of praise and prayer it's been passed down to us in a book that, as I showed the kids this morning, right, is right at the center of your Bibles. If you flop open your pew Bible right to the middle, you get to the book of Psalms. At least that's what we call it in English, Psalms. In Hebrew, it's called Tehillim. You don't have to remember that. Here's what you have to remember. Tehillim means praises. This book is a book of praises. It's words of praise. And that's really easy to make sense of if you read Psalm 98, which joy to the world is based on. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. If you read Psalm 100, which our words of assurance were derived from. If you read Psalm 150 that we did with the children this morning, right? All the instruments, everything that has breath, praise the Lord, alleluia, amen. When the new baby is born, when the wedding is happened, when we have those moments in life where we, we look at a rainbow, where we look out over the beauty of nature, we say, oh, Alleluia. Amen. Easy to praise. Of course, it's a book of praises. What if we were to turn to Psalm 88? Uh, the 88th Tehillim, the 88th praise we would read in part, O Lord, God of my salvation, at night when I cry out before you, let my prayer come before you. Incline your ear to my cry. My soul is full of troubles and my life draws near the grave. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I am like those who have no help like those forsaken among the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave, like those who you remember no more, for they are cut off from your hand. Wretched and close to death from my youth up, I suffer your terrors. I am desperate. Your wrath has swept over me. Your dread assaults destroy me. They surround me like a flood all day long from all sides. They close in on me. You have caused friend and neighbor to shun me. My companions are in darkness. The psalm ends there. The 
the praise ends there. How is that praise? Uh, Or what if we turn to Psalm 22, a psalm Jesus knew so well that he quoted it from the cross. It's the last praise he breathes when he breathes his last breath. It starts, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Praise. Uh, Even if we flip the page to Psalm 23, which I know some of you will know by heart. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Uh, Even that is a quieter psalm of assurance, right? Comfort. It's not the exuberant energy of Psalm 150 with the instruments and the pipe. But nevertheless, it's a praise. We read Psalm 23 here at every funeral. A praise. So what is praise? Uh, If thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory is words of praise, and these exuberant psalms are praise, but so are these anguished laments or these quieter poems of comfort, all of that is praise. How can all of that be praise? There is something so instructive here for our lives of faith, because praise can look and sound like a lot of things. And we sometimes get this mixed up. We sometimes confuse praise with our mood or with our energy. We can mix praise up with the songs we know well and grew up singing. And for sure, all of those things can be praise, but they are not the essence of what praise really is. What the doxology to the Lord's Prayer teaches us, yours, O God, is the kingdom, yours the power, yours the glory. What the book of Psalms teaches us is that praise is not about the mood I am in or the state I am in. Praise is giving to God the things that are God's to hold. Praise is not about the mood I'm in or the state I'm in both of which can be, depending on the day or the week or the year, a bit of a mess. Praise is giving to God the things that are God's to hold, which is everything. The doxology of the Lord's Prayer, many scholars think, is derived from the verses Kitten read earlier from First Chronicles. And David is praying a prayer of blessing after the building of the temple. And if you read the whole passage, what he's saying is, God, everything belongs to you anyway. Uh, how can we even come to you with this prayer? How can we even praise you when all the gifts we're bringing today, they were already yours to begin with? All these offerings we brought to build this beautiful temple, they were yours to begin with. They already belong to you, God. Yours, O Lord, are the power, the glory, the victory, the majesty. Yours is the kingdom. This temple is yours. It's all yours already. We're just handing back over to you the things that came from your hands. Praise is giving to God the things that belong in God's hands the things that are God's to hold. The reading from Revelation today is this creative, imaginative vision of this heavenly throne room, right? There's all these angels and these creatures all around the throne, and there's more people they can count, right? And they're singing songs of praise to God, and it turns out that all these people singing are people who have come through trial and tribulation, who have been hurting and hard-pressed, who have been crushed under the weight of the world's pain, they are the ones surrounding the throne singing because God has wiped every tear from their eyes. Which can't happen if there weren't tears there to begin with. These are the mourners. They are grievers who are nevertheless bearing witness that all power and glory ultimately belong to God, not 
to the people crushing them or hurting them or oppressing them, not to the people who pretend like they own the kingdom and the power and the glory, not to Pharaoh or Babylon or the Roman Empire, whoever it is doing the crushing and the persecuting. Those things look like they have the power, but they don't have the power. They might look like they have the power. Disease and hurt and pain might look like it has the power in your life. Loss and grief sting and hurt, and they sure look and feel like they have the power. But praise is not the mood we're in or the state we're in. Praise is just giving to God the things that are God's to hold. And I know I can get that mixed up. I can get to thinking that when I am depressed, when I'm anxious, when I'm hurting, when I'm just plain sad, how can I possibly praise God? Like it would be dishonest for me to do that. But look at those Psalms again. Somehow saying to God, God, I am alone, I'm in darkness, I'm lost without you, I'm crushed, I'm hurting, I'm broken. God, where are you? Prayers like that, honest Prayers like that are still praises because they are still handing over to God the things that are God's to hold, which includes my pain, and yes, it includes my celebration, my joy, my wins in all of those moments, right? We hand it to God into God's good and gracious hands. Praise. So that no matter how you wake up in the morning, what state you're in or mood you're in, no matter how you've come here today, skipping or dragging yourself, you can offer all of that up to God, and God receives your praise. Which, characteristically of me, is probably a much too long and complicated way of saying something that is so simple that we'll be able to teach it to the kids at VBS this week. God's got the whole world in his hands. God's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, children, in his hands. He's got you and me, children, in his hands. He's got you and me, children, in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. God, thine is the glory and the power. Yours is the kingdom forever. The earth is yours and all that's in it. And so, well, this table where we gather every week, this sure belongs to you too. It's not mine. It's not Bonaire Christian Churches. This is Christ's table. And so the kinds of people who are invited to share in this meal are the same kinds of people who can share praise, which as far as we can tell from the Psalms and all the scriptural witness we've got, is every kind of person there is in the world. So no matter who you are, no matter where you're coming from today, no matter where you are going, you are welcome to share in this meal of grace.
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you at this table with love and gratitude. We bring everything to you, celebrations of happiness and joy, also grief and sorrow. As we, end this, as we begin this week, we pray that you help us be more mindful and to praise you, giving you everything. It's in your name we pray. Amen. So we remember that even on a night of darkness, a night when he would be given over to death, that even then Jesus gathered at a table with his friends. He took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this. Remember me. Let us pray. God, our Father, you are all-knowing and all-powerful, having created the world and everything in it in seven days. We ask you to be with us here today as we seek forgiveness for our shortcomings. We thank you for the many gifts, talents, and resources that you richly bestow upon us and ask you to help us see opportunities to share your resources with others. We pray that the emblems at this table, which represent the body and blood of Jesus, will strengthen us for service to you. Amen.
In the same way, when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, poured out for you, for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this. Remember me. God, we give you thanks for these gifts of grace by which you make us again into one body, the body of Christ, sent into the world to share your love. Amen. Well, here at Bonaire Christian Church, we say that we are on a mission. Our mission is to reach out, to proclaim the gospel, to reach up, to worship God, and to reach in, to nurture and grow in faith and love. So if there's anyone here among us who wishes to join with this congregation as we seek to live out this mission in the world, you may come forward during this hymn in which we are consecrated again for that mission. Let's stand and join in singing. If you forget all about the sermon today, and you remember Nicole singing Hold On, and kids playing instruments, and singing You've Got the Whole World, He's Got the Whole World in His Hands, then you've remembered. <laughs> Praise. So as you go from this place, may you go in peace and know that you do not go alone. For the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and that great communion of the Holy Spirit are with you now and always. Amen. <laughs>